This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring Rose Holman defensive coordinator Nick Davis. Coach Davis highlights the value of coaching Division III football, shares the significance of creating favorable matchups on the field, and discusses the importance of helping other coaches develop professionally. But first, a word from our sponsor. Change the game. It's not just words. It's what we do every single day. Regardless of sport. Regardless of skill level. Field Turf was built on innovation, dating back to our invention of long-piled infilled turf, which revolutionized the industry. Today, we offer a series of game-changing fibers, high-performance infills, sport-specific applications, and smart field technology. And we've done our homework, thoroughly testing all our products so that they offer leading quality and safety. We invest in quality materials, quality manufacturing, and quality teams to deliver sustainable services supported by the industry's leading service team and best insured warranty. We design and manufacture the canvas upon which your program's history will be written. Our team of over 800 employees is made of ASBA certified field builders, civil engineers, designers, and more. We've built over 20,000 fields worldwide for organizations at all levels. As a member of the Tarkett Sports family, Field Turf is a global leader with unprecedented financial support and experience. We can offer a variety of surfacing solutions through our family's leading brands, from running tracks to tennis courts, indoor gymnasium, and hybrid or residential turf. The Tarkett Sports family has the right system for you. Field Turf, let's change the game together. Coach Nick Davis, how are you doing today, man? Awesome. Excited to be here. Uh, obviously, the AFCA is kind of the pinnacle of our profession, so I'm excited to talk some football with you guys today. No doubt, man. Well, I, I, I sure appreciate you taking some time right in the middle of a spring football season, which <laughs> doesn't even sound right rolling off my tongue, but I do appreciate you taking a little bit of time to sit down and talk to, talk to myself and our membership. Um, but before we get going, just wanted to ask you about your roles at Rose Holman. Uh, you, 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 you do a ton over there. Uh, could you tell us about you know, some of the different things that you do and how that helps contribute to the, to your program? Yeah, no, I think uh, one huge advantage of coaching at a Division three school um, with a small staff is you're able to do a lot of different things, wear a lot of different hats. Uh, I've, in fact, I started my coaching career. I coached offense here. I've been our special teams coordinator. At some point over my career, I've been the strength and conditioning coach. I've been our recruiting coordinator. Um, I've been the video guy. I've done the laundry. Um, so that also helps me. I'm the assistant head coach right now, currently in my role and defensive coordinator, but any new coach coming into the program that that's their job, I'm kind of the, and this is a curse, but I'm kind of the go-to guy, um, for those coaches. And in fact, uh, we got a soccer graduate assistant that he's in charge of video for soccer. He's been wearing me out lately and he's a great <laughs> kid and I love him, but I'm like, I'm in the middle of the season, man. Uh, right. we all, I don't want you to ask him, but, uh, He's, he's coming, you know, and, and athletic department wise, you know, we do a great job of recruiting. So a lot of the other coaches in the building um, come and ask us what we're doing and all that sort of stuff. So wearing a lot of hats and, and my philosophy has always been like, and that's Coach Sokol, our head coach as well, is be the head coach of your role. Um, and I've always kind of ran with that when I've been the recruiting coordinator, the strength coach or the, the laundry guy. Right. I wanted to be the best laundry guy you could be in the business the best video guy you could be in the business, uh, the best recruiting coordinator. So uh, that's really cool that our head coach kind of gives us that empowerment, um, whether it's, you know, you're setting up field equipment. You're the coordinator. You got a title. Um, you, you handle the student workers. Um, and at the end of the day, it's our job as assistant coaches to make the, the head coach's life a little easier. Um, as the assistant head coach, that kind of been my role is if there's a problem, they come to me first and I tell them either, hey, go talk to the head coach or I try to solve it as much as possible so his um, his uh, load's a little lighter. That's awesome, man. And, you know, I, I, I did have the opportunity when I was coaching to to be a, a graduate assistant at the FBS level. And I had the opportunity 
to start my collegiate coaching career as a uh, graduate assistant at the, at the Division II level. And, uh, you know, they were a couple years apart, the, the two experiences, and I did work a full-time role in between. And, man, I was just – it was just blown away. Uh, I was just blown away with how much – I, I don't want to say – I don't want to use the term better – how much more exposure I got to a lot of different things as a as a Division two uh, graduate assistant, just because you know, as you mentioned, you're doing laundry, you're 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 assisting in the strength and conditioning program, you know, you're you're <laughs> lining the football field up, you got a position group, you gotta you gotta break down the film, and you know, just as a FBS GA, it wasn't that that extended, uh, you know. Like I said, you are also recruiting as well, getting some of that experience. So you know, that's that's great that you highlight that, you know, taking advantage at, at that smaller university because now. You know, um, n- not that you're looking forward, but, you know, you make yourself a lot more marketable, you know, whenever, you know, you do start looking for another gig at some point in time, you know, you've, you've got all these multiple experiences. So I think that's great, man. Um, now, let's talk about Rose Holman. Uh, you know, I ran into to you guys on the road, as we were talking about before we got started on the podcast, and I mean, your, your academic standards are unbelievable. And, um, you know, it, it, as many see that as a tremendous opportunity, go and educate young people who have, a, a, I think, it's for engineering is the big thing there. Uh, it, it does present some difficulties as a coach when, when you start getting on the road and, um, you know, looking for kids that might be in more in the liberal arts, but he can play ball. And it makes it really tough to, <laughs> you know, do those type of things. Can you talk about how you navigate the recruiting process at a high academic school, especially one that's really, really focused on one certain academic area? Yeah, so I think a lot of people think our our biggest challenge is actually the our biggest strength. I think uh, yes, we got to recruit smart kids from across the country, all fifty states. Um, obviously, we're not going to be traveling to all fifty, and, and with COVID, actually, obviously, everyone's not traveling very much at all. But I think that's been our biggest strength that we go to the high academic camps. I talk to high academic kids, and it's a quick, you know, I don't. The 40, the bench press isn't the first thing I'm concerned about. It's what his major is. If the kid tells me he wants to study engineering, you know, we got to kind of create this funnel where, yes, there's a ton of high academic kids in the country. And then through our recruiting database, I think we identified 1,500 kids that would be a good fit academically for us. Out of those 1,500, we're, we're trying to get 300, 200 of those kids to apply to our school that are serious about engineering. So, um, I think that's been a strength of ours is identifying kids and then eliminating kids that aren't hardcore into STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, math, because that's all our school has. There's only really two schools in the country that play college football that their whole entire roster is, is engineers uh, or computer science. And that's us in Colorado School of Mines. Even MIT has a bunch of business guys um, on their team. So that's nice for us that if a kid's like, I'm not sure, um, yes, we're going to recruit good football players, but at the end of the day, if he's not sure, I'm not going to try to talk that kid into becoming an engineer um, because there's going to be great options out there. There's a lot of great Division three schools that have great engineering programs, but they also have business programs and different things. Those kids are going to go to those schools at the end. So I think what we've tried to do is, is find those kids that are hardcore since they were a freshman. They wanted to be an engineer. Dad's an engineer. Mom's an engineer. Uh, Grandpa was an engineer. And, uh, right done a really good job of identifying those guys over the last 11 years and our roster's grown. We, we got kids from over uh, 40 different states in Coach right. Sokol's era here uh, that have played for us. Man, that's, you know, what? I, I love the way you answered that question because I asked it, I, I don't want to say in a negative way, but yeah, I framed it, you know, hey, this, what's the difficulties in this deal? And, you know, you immediately say, hey, it's not, it's not difficult. It's, it, and you're right. When you look at it from that perspective, it, it really, clears the water for you a lot you know if a guy's just not hey man I want to be a, a football coach ah, well this is not for you <laughs> you know I, I won't spin my wheels for you know two months with you for you to decide that you don't want to come here that's that's really awesome you're able to make that delineation now I do want to give you an opportunity real quick to highlight um I never forget this I was sitting next to one of your coaches uh I, I don't know who it was down in Texas at the point in time at a camp and he was talking to a student athlete about uh the graduation rate there uh, the success rate of the kids that come through that program. And uh, I don't recall the exact numbers, but I know I was blown away with it because it was a heck of a way to just approach recruit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the national average for uh, studying engineering and graduating in four years from every institution is about a 44% graduation rate. Um, at Rose Holman, our school itself is about an 80%, and our athletes actually graduate about a 89% in four years. That's a four-year rate. And that's if you come to Rose Holman, 
So that doesn't even take into account maybe a kid that came to Rose home and decided I didn't want to study engineering and left. So it's a phenomenal within our athletic department. Like we've really became experts in retention for kids that wanted to come be the best engineer in the country that graduated in four years at that exact thing that they wanted. So um, something, you know, it's obviously, I think athletics play a little bit, but it's everyone at the school. And that's the really cool thing about this school is everyone's in it together, whether it's athletics or academics, um, we're all in on the same mission. Yeah, no doubt. I, I, I thought it was great that number one, you're able to kind of regurgitate that as well as that guy's, you know, been able to spit some of those facts because, you know, it is so much bigger than those four years, you know, uh, been able to, to find the highlights from across campus, you know, from the academic side and, and, and present it to those kids in a way um, that, that helps you become a tremendous recruiter. So anyways, let's shift gears real quick. Um, you know, you, your, your humongous presence on social media. Um, you know, you have the spread defense, <laughs> which I love that name. Uh, you have the spread defense Twitter account. You got, you know, over 15,000 followers that are very active amongst some of the you know, stuff that you post. Um, you know, where does your passion to, you know, use that use that medium to not only recruit and, and educate players, but to educate other coaches? You know, where does that passion come from? And, you know, what kind of relationships have you been able to build from that? Yeah, so uh, kind of the thing in coaching is it's kind of all about who you know. And, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. But I think there's some truth about who knows you. And I was this, I played college football at Mama College Division Three in, in Illinois, not the, the best, you know, college out in the country. All right, it was a good school. I liked it. I had a great experience. We won a lot of games. Uh, our quarterback ended up playing for the New York Giants, which helped us win a lot of football games. But not a lot of people knew me. I didn't have a lot of coaching connections. I didn't have a dad that was a, a college football or high school head coach. Um, the, the staff at Mama's College had all been together for 15 years, and they weren't leaving. So my drive for social media was, one, I wanted to promote the crap out of my school. I wanted to help that with recruiting. I wanted to promote my players. At the end of the day, my kids aren't going to go to the NFL. They're going to be the best engineers in the country. Uh, mechanical engineers, biomedical. Some are going to go into doctors. Some go into law school and different things once they're finished. So I want to promote those kids. I want Google, um, you know, out there um, being like, oh, this is Coleman football guy. We need to hire this guy for a $100,000 job. So I want to promote my players as much as possible because at the end of the day, they're not going to the NFL. Um, they're going to go be a, an engineer and go change the world, which I, I truly believe, and that's why kids come here. So I wanted to do that. And then along with that, I wanted to help coaches. And I always tell our young football coaches, if I'm going to hire a guy, I'm going to look at the social media. Because a lot of the young coaches will say, oh, we'll use social media and recruiting. I'm going to look at your Twitter. Are you promoting your program? Um, no, you know, some kids don't. So what I wanted to create was I want to promote my program. I want to promote my kids. And then along with that, I wanted to, you know, it's a bonus. I'm promoting myself. Um, but it's really about promoting my kids. And our program, and along with that, yeah, that we we team and we've helped coaches out. If I'm gonna send, you know, put clips out of a three-four defense or a three-three stack, that's gonna help some coach in, in Texas, and right. he may remember that we're an engineering program. Okay. He may have a kid six years down the line that's gonna be an engineer. If I get another job someday down the line, that coach is gonna remember that. Hey, I've, I've helped them, and I think that's what the AFCA is all about: is helping coaches, helping coaches. So along with helping other coaches, uh, helping my program, and uh, it's uh, sometimes a pain in the butt because when you have 20,000 followers, you have a lot of direct messages from recruits, um, other high school coaches. But I, I try to respond to every single kid, every coach out there, um, because uh, that's the type of person I am. There is no doubt about that. And for our listeners, this is 100% genuine. Uh, you know, I, I want to say me and you messaged probably even before I took this role here at the AFCA, but uh, you know when I when I hit, reached out to you in regards to you know speaking at our virtual convent convention, I mean within minutes, I mean you're 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 down, you're ready to share and uh, pour into other coaches, man. And I can always appreciate uh, coaches that are, are are passionate about sharing. Now speaking on that, uh, you put together uh, something that was pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, if you didn't know the name of what's called engineering Saxon, and I just you know the word play there was got me hooked pretty pretty cool uh pretty easily but uh you know you put together a presentation on engineering sacks and uh you know if you look at your defense over the last few years i mean you guys have put up crazy numbers when it comes down to sacks and uh, you know you've been very innovative and creative 
in regards to uh, creating defensive pressures as well. Um, could you just talk a little bit about your defensive philosophy? Now, I'm going to say this to our listeners. We're right in the middle of Division Three season, so uh, I'm not trying to give his game plan away. So, uh, you know, but if you could talk about, you know, what your thought process is from a defensive philosophy standpoint. Yeah, I think first thing you got to understand is what the offense wants to do. And it, it really helped me that I coached um, three years of offense here. Um, and Brian White, who is uh, out on the East Coast at, at Hampton as the offensive line coach, and he was our offensive coordinator at the time, he was a true mentor to me, teaching me offense. I played defense. I never coached offense. They gave me a shot because they thought I was smart. I, I guess they uh, thought I would work hard, and it paid off. And uh, so they taught me about offense. So me then becoming the defensive coordinator here, I understand what an offense wants to do in terms of protection-wise or in the run game. And the offense wants to create matchups. Uh, Coach White was very good at, well, we need to slide the three technique this week in our, our combo protection because this kid's a stud. Um, or we need to go to the, the boundary because they send boundary pressure, all this stuff. So I think as a coach, you sometimes run into the tendencies on film, but you don't necessarily look at the teams that that offense is playing and maybe who those players are. So. I think we do a really good job of trying to figure out what an offense is going to do to you. And I think that helps. Um, we're helped out by the fact that I coached offense and I, I try to teach our defensive coaches. In fact, um, our D line coach currently was uh, an offensive uh, graduate assistant, essentially, or an undergrad at, at Missouri. Our defensive backs coach, coach wide receivers here. So everyone on our staff has coached offense on the defensive side of the football, which really helps us. But no, and like I said, engineering sacks, yeah, the plan works. We don't have the most talented kids in the country. They're really smart. I have that advantage. Um, but they're not the best athletes in the world. I mean, you know, Mount Union's won 13 national championships. They got really good football players there. Um, Mary Harden Baylor, man, they got some freaks running around. But what we do have is they're smart, um, and they can understand a game plan. They'll listen to you when you say, hey, the man side's going to be here. This is how we attack this for protection. And then I think a lot of what we've done and why we've had a lot of success. We have a lot of tools in our toolbox. We're going to be three, four, five, six down. We're going to make an offense practice against that stuff all week. And we may not do it all. Um, but you don't have enough time in your week to practice against everything. Um, and I think there's two different types of offensive coaches. And this is why my philosophy is the kind of way there is. There's an offensive coach that's going to keep it simple and they're going to tip their caps if they beat you. Or there's an offensive coach that's going to say, we're going to block everything. When you try to block everything, now your players are confused and they're going to go against each other's rules. And, and what we've seen, too, in the, in the past is everyone talks about beating the man side of the protection. We beat the zone side of the protection in, in pass pro just about as much because O-linemen are undisciplined. You can't just say, hey, the O-line's sliding over here to the left. Let's not try to blitz that side because O-linemen, when stuff crosses their face, even though it's their rule, they're tended to go back because their coach says, oh, you know, don't do nothing, go help. And then when we find those teams that do that, we've had a lot of success. So that's kind of the general philosophy. Have a lot of tools through our toolbox. Coach smart um, and uh, let your kids play fast and play hard. And we're pretty fortunate we got smart kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tying two things together, having smart kids and then also having a lot of tools in your toolbox. You know, one of the things you talked about, um, you know, in, in your in your convention talk was having a large number of ways to teach your players to set the front that was one yep. of the things you really highlighted and, and, and just this uh, infatuation with creating a bunch of variety uh can you talk about you know why this variety is so crucial to your defensive scheme and uh you know why it's so important to you so i mean a lot of people watch that national championship and what did alabama do they they created mismatch offensively they put their best player that won the heisman trophy all over the field to expose, you know, Ohio State and some of the tendencies they do. So that's kind of my philosophy on defense is I want to create matchups within our, you know, box or defensive back. So we have the ability to set a front to the right to the left, the field to the boundary, to a tailback, away from a tailback, to a tight end, away from a tight end, um, to a slot receiver, away from a slot receiver. And what that does is if I have a tendency on you, now I'm getting my best players maybe in the pass game especially against your worst pass protector. You know, if you have this amazing <laughs> left defensive end and he's going against the All-American 
right tackle on every snap, well, that's not great. You know, maybe he's going to win, but if the left tackle stinks, you should put that really, really good player over on the other side because that's what these offenses are trying to do to you as a defense. So we try to create these matchups. And yeah, it's a lot of different ways. Our linebackers have no field and boundary coverage responsibilities. Um, but at the end of the day, it allows us to put our kids in the best situation and vice versa. They got a, a road grader right guard and your three techniques stinks, you know, t- typically on the left side. Well, put your best guy that's going to be able to handle a double team or a base block over there so you can limit stuff in the run game. So we try to create as many matchups as what an offense does. And I think that's the game, you know, that there's plays and, you know, there's players. And if you got your best player in the situation to take advantage of certain things. So we may set stuff to the right the whole entire week. The next week we may set it to the left or a tailback. So we're trying to figure out that coordinator. And then we're trying to put our kids in the best situation. Coach, uh, kind of following up on what you just mentioned there and then tying it into this, uh, you know, unique season that we had uh, here where, you know, I I know, I know fall ball looked different for everybody at those levels that did not play um, this, this past fall. You know, how do you, how do you have so much variety, um, you know, and, and, and so many different things that these players can learn, but still find a way to, to package it and give it to them and allow them to play at a high level, you know, regardless of how much time that you have, you know, when, when is that, when do you know too much is too much? You know, you got too much out there and the players aren't playing fast. You know, I, you know how do you balance that? Yeah, that that's my biggest problem because I see all this cool stuff on Twitter. I'm like, oh, we can call up this and do it. Um, and in fact, you know, we're getting ready for, we, you know, we played our last game and our call sheet was 45 calls. I think we played 69 plays. We, we used almost everything besides a few like third down situations. So, you know, I, we probably have 8,000 different things that we can do. Um, but it, it's trying to figure out what's the best for that week and, and all those right. certain things along with that. But, yeah, the kids got to understand it. So you got to be a phenomenal teacher. Right. You, uh, we try to package stuff to where three down fronts are all named after birds, four down fronts are all named after fishes, and then the name of that fish or that bird tells everyone where to line up. And then we have simple movement rules. And then we use those rules. They cross over from three to four down front. And it's not a lot. We do a lot and it may look super complex. Again, I have really smart kids. But I think, you know, a school, you know, if you told a kid with a a 13 ACT, and I know there's a lot of those kids, you know, out there um, that are high school football players that, you know, academics, not the first thing. But if you told them a word had five letters and every word that had five letters, you went in a certain spot. Like we've created concrete rules. And this started off by our kids are math and science nerds. They hate the rules being broken in math and science classes. Right. So we tell them if this word is six letters, period the end, this is where everyone ends up, no matter what. So we have a lot of categories like that where the number of letters of the word tells every word to end up and then I don't break the rules. Um and I think that I just get out of the way. If something doesn't fit within our system, we don't do it. Um, but that's so nice because then they understand the rules. Oh, this rule has three and all D line, you can play them any position. Or, you know, we have positions and we have letters in the playbook, but we have D linemen, we have linebackers, we have defensive backs, and they all understand the whole scheme that in, in some regard, I could take my corner, put him as a five technique, tell him it's a six letter word, and he's going to know where to end up on the rush. That, so you're able to get in these hybrid stuff. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's, that's really cool. I mean, the, the, the compartmentalization of that, being able to, you know, come up with some hard, fast rules and allow for those players to, to understand that and, and play fast. And I will have to say, I would love to be a fly on the wall as you guys are coming up with some of those names and pulling out the dictionary and thesaurus is looking for five, five letter words and stuff like that, man. That's awesome. Coach, uh, 20 minutes in the middle of a football season. I know that's an eternity, man, and uh, I, I want to turn you back to your program. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time. Before you hop off, if you wouldn't mind sharing, you know, any way coaches can connect with you, namely your uh, your, your your social media account, your Twitter account. Yeah, so um, you guys can follow me at Coach Nick Davis on Twitter. We have a at Spread Defense account, which is you're not going to see all the recruiting stuff that you're going to see on my, on my personal account. But if you want to message me about any schematic stuff, the at coach Nick Davis is going to be the best. Uh, we got a YouTube channel at spread defense. That's got a bunch of films. So again, um, 
you guys here in about seven weeks can bug the crap out of me and I'll meet with you guys on Zoom, <laughs> whatever you guys need to do. But for the next, uh, you know, six weeks, I kind of want to be just focused on our guys. But I'm willing to do whatever. Um, again, you know, in the middle of the season, I'll jump on here. And um, again, it's about spreading the word of uh, being a great person, um, being a great father, uh, a friend, um, and, you know, most importantly, a teacher. So uh, I'm excited that you guys had me on. And if anyone has any questions, let me know. Coach, thanks so much for being a great ambassador to this uh, great game that we have here. Uh, best of luck throughout the course of the season. Look forward to reconnecting with you soon. Okay, man? All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Coach.